Hey guys, good morning. Um, Rob Ford uh, with Meriplex Communications. Uh, I'm a principal technologies uh, covering um, uh, pre-sales uh, as well as uh, uh, assisting with, uh, with product management um, and, and other sales activities. Um, I'm here today with uh, David Turner, who's our technical project program manager for uh, SD-WAN, as well as Andy Ruse, who's our director of information security. Um, and we wanted to talk to you today about um, uh, the uh, the current uh, uh, situation that's happening here globally and here in the U.S. That's uh, that's displacing uh, employees and, and forcing them to move to a, a work from home environment, and uh, and that's COVID nineteen, right? So it, it's 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 very much real for everybody uh, who, who works at a company, um, especially if if you report into an office. And today, the uh, the conversation that we're going to be talking about is going to be around um, work preparing for workplace disruption and uh, and some solutions that Meriplex has um, existing um, that we've had before solutions and offerings, as well as a uh, some new capabilities and, and offerings that we're going to talk to you about um, that our customers are now leveraging to help them. Uh, not only prepare for workplace disruption, but respond to it. Um, and so the, the solutions that we're going to talk about today uh, are going to cover a broad range of, of, of different options um, around, uh, you know, connectivity um, and, and security. And, uh, and with, with those solutions, the idea is to, to, to help our customers um, respond quickly, get and mobilize employees, get them home, get them set up, um, where that that way they can uh, start uh, producing uh, for the company again while they're home um, with their with their families. And so, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to David Turner and Andy Ruse, and they're going to take us through the actual solution. Cool. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. And we've definitely seen a lot of a lot of customers uh, quickly having to transition to to work from home. And there's some challenges with that. So challenge number one is connectivity. So customers, when they work from home, employees, when they work from home, they need access to their business applications. There's been challenges doing that. Um, typically, typically, customers have bought VPN or, or firewalls sized for VPN at their, at their corporate office just for the concurrent users that need to work at home. They're, they were never planning on having all of their users uh, work from home at once. So there's limited scalability. And then also segmenting traffic or segregating traffic for trusted and untrusted users as well. So you're having people work from home. They only need access to certain applications. You don't want to have to give them access to everything in your network. Um, so there's a concept of trusted and untrusted users. Thank you. So the, the, second, the second challenge, and thank you, David and Robert, for, for the great introduction, is about security, of course, right? So as you guys know, you know, when you are in your enterprise, you have this uh, good firewall protecting all your traffic going out. So what happened when you're at home? What happened with that security of that traffic? Who, how you're going to make sure that when your users are at home, you're still protecting the traffic? And at the same time, what can you do? when your user is at home and is having all these other devices, your thermostat, your iPads, your Xboxes, uh, connecting in the same network. So what can you do to better protect your enterprise resources within that, uh, that very important challenge on security? As well as application performance as well. So besides connectivity, security, we're also seeing a lot of challenges with application performance, specifically in real-time traffic. Um, you're seeing a lot of power users <clears throat> that are on the phone a lot, you know, they're, they're at home now and they're not getting the quality of certain, you know, the, the, uh, the voice quality and video quality that they would typically get at the office. <clears throat> so we're, we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of besides just power users, we're seeing contact center users, a lot of co major contact uh, center providers are sending all their employees home. And when people call in, customers call in, they want to make sure that the customers hear the voice, the, the, the typical voice quality that they would at the office. So we're seeing a lot of uh, challenges with the application performance, data prioritization as well, and accessing your cloud and, and SaaS applications. So something to add to that on the application is, and I'm sure you're all aware, you have all your kids at home and Disney Plus and Netflix and all the traffic is fighting, as David was saying, <clears> with your voice and you know all these real-time applications that 
that everyone at home is trying to use at the same time, you know, is, is fighting for that same traffic that you're trying to produce your services to that end user. And that's why that's also a very important challenge. Correct. And, and when you mentioned that, it's not just your own home network. It's not your kids just fighting for Netflix, right? I mean, you're on shared bandwidth a lot of times with cable right. providers. Um, so everyone else's is families and everyone else is working from home as well. So we'll get into that with the uh, SD-WAN portion. So a couple of the solutions that, that we have put together here are uh, VPN as a service, cloud internet security, and SD-WAN. And these are going to solve specific challenges. So the VPN as a service is going to solve, you know, the basic connectivity challenge. The SD-WAN is going to solve the, the challenge for the power users where they need, you know, full connectivity. They need the prioritization of the data. They need, you know, uh, solid voice quality. And then I'll let Andy kind of talk through what the cloud internet security is. is. Yeah, so what, we think, what we're trying to do with this uh, conversation about cloud internet security is about what we were talking before, right? The perimeter now move from the enterprise to the end user whenever they are connecting. So how we make sure that that traffic, that in transit traffic is protecting. And at the same time, how you make sure that whatever policies, whatever web filtering you have in your organization, you're at absolutely controlling that from a central location and also seeing and, and evaluating uh, the traffic of your users to better protect them and also better use your resources. Yep, and the cloud internet security actually ties in nicely to the VPN as a service as well as the SD-WAN. That's great, guys. Hey, I wanted to make a note real quick around VPN as a service. So um, the cloud internet security and SD-WAN were uh, existing capabilities that, that Meriplex has had before, and we've been taking those to market for, uh, for several years. But the VPN as a service is a new offering that we recently developed um, to help our customers uh, at scale uh, the connectivity into the corporate network, right? And so uh, David and Nanny are going to talk us through that piece. But I wanted to note that you know this this service is 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 a new capability. We we've uh, we we spun it up pretty quickly, um, and uh, we're already starting to do deployments on this service. Yeah, and and you know it's funny that you said Rob because the 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 principal driver that we have, like two months ago to start deploying VPN as a service was of course it was not COVID nineteen. It was people moving to the cloud, right? Moving all their their critical services to the cloud, and they're saying, hey, you know what? I'm moving all my services to the cloud. What do I do with my VPN, right? So and that's where we say, you know what? Let's work on that. Let's provide you VPN as a service from our infrastructure, so you don't have to depend on your infrastructure or your local infrastructure for getting access to your resources whenever you mm -hmm. require. And that was the primary driver. Now, now the driver changes a little bit for the current circumstances. So let's, let's go over some of the benefits of this service that I think is going to resonate of what everyone is doing, right? So the first benefit that we have there is secure connect remote users to the corporate network. We, we all know, as David was saying, that now we have over 70% or more of our workforce trying to get all these resources. So we need to provide a secure way for those users to connect to your internal resources in case you are still having an app, a service that is running in your location. Now, with that, let's go to the benefit number two. Let's say that you have a user like an IT administrator who has required access to all the different devices and all the different VLANs that you have access. That's a case scenario that we can provide you that we'll do that with a layer three IPsec type of tunnel. But let's talk about the second case. You're working with a partner, you're working with a, with a contractor for you know, developing a software or doing something very specific in your environment. You don't want them to have access to the whole network. So how you segregate and control that from a security side, you, we have a solution for that that is the SSL VPN that we can leverage for those cases. Now, the funny thing on, on both situations is that it's not one or the other. We can provide you both services so you can control both type of connectivities without issues. The other thing is you need this now. You need this, you can wait as, as I can imagine, you know, this is something that is happening to you right now. And, and to me, we can provide a quick deployment so you have these services up and running whenever you need them. Uh, of course, the scalable solution for our and, and, and of the clients and bandwidth, this is meaning uh, you, you can chalk points, you can have chalk points at, at your data center, or you can have a limitation on your licenses. You don't have to worry about those things with us. We can provide you as many as you need, concurrent users and bandwidth to provide those services that you require back to those end users. 
Our model is a subscription base. It's pretty much an OPEX model where you don't have to make a huge investment. Like in the case that you, if you require a new firewall, if you require more license, you have to make a huge investment right now to provide the services. In our model, it's pretty much a subscription base. You pay for the users instead of you know, having to do an initial uh, big investment of money. The other important thing is we integrate this with your Active Directory radius to make sure that the authentication is the same user and password that they have for their Active Directory so you don't have to manage like a lot of different users and password for those people to authenticate. And this is pretty much client agnostic. So this works on Windows, Mac, Android and Linux. So this is important because some people is telling us, you know what, we don't have laptops. So the users are starting to use their home computers to access their, their, their resources. There are some security concerns with that, but let's say that you cover the security concerns of the BYOD, but you still need those people to be efficient. They need to connect to your network and you as a policy are allowing that. And then we can provide the client for any of those type of devices to connect back to your enterprise. And the, last, and the last portion, of course, we integrate this VPN to your full one. This is the MPLS, SD1, whatever you have, we integrate this with your full one so you can have access to all this, these locations. And with that, let me pass now the presentation to David, who's going to talk a little bit about how this integrates in all the different uh, aspects of your network, or how it can integrate. Yep. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate that. So as Andy said, there's several ways we can we can integrate um, into the customer's existing infrastructure. The first one is with uh, IPsec integration. And the way the IPsec integration is we actually have our, our hosted firewalls, which are in our multiple data centers, and we build IPsec tunnels over the internet to the customer's network, whether that's their corporate data center or their corporate office. We have capabilities to do primary and redundant tunnels for redundancy. Um, the, the user, the work from home user will actually build a VPN tunnel into our firewalls here. So into our, our, our VPN servers, which is our hosted firewalls, we can do SSL or IPsec VPNs and to access resources at the customer, uh, data center or, or the customer network, we go over the, the IPsec tunnels and then return the traffic back through the firewall and back to the, to the user here. We have the capability of doing split tunneling. So if we want to, <clears throat> if we want to save bandwidth, um, you know, over this link here, I mean, uh, you know, sorry, over the IPsec links, we can send traffic directly to the internet. So we can do split tunneling, send traffic directly to the internet. We'll get into this um, a little bit later with the cloud security because we rec definitely recommend this type of design with the cloud security. Um, there are obviously some security concerns of doing split tunneling to the internet with uh when you don't have that that uh, extra option and andy will go through that here shortly so the other option instead of a split tunnel is that we can either send all of our traffic through our firewalls here and then back out to the internet or we can send traffic through our firewalls here and then send it over the ipsec tunnel and have it go to the internet um, through the customer's existing firewalls that they have so they would have the same you know security policies that they have when they're at the corporate office David, why don't you talk a little bit about why it's so important to have that redundant IPsec tunnel? So, yeah, so obviously on our side, we, you know, we have multiple carriers on our side. We're coming into multiple data centers. So on our side, you know, we have multiple pass in. But for, you know, a customer site, they might have a single, um, single path or, you know, single internet connection at an office. Um, they might have a single firewall at, at their primary data center. So in case either of those fails, Right now, with with COVID nineteen happening, it's you know it's going to be harder to, and harder to get replacement equipment. Probably we're going to see slower times on on um, repairing circuits from what we've seen a little bit lately. Um, so, you know, having that redundant connection that automatically fails over would make it seamless. So, in case there is an issue on on the the, the customer side here, the remote users wouldn't really skip a beat. They might drop a couple of packets while that's failing over, but they'd still have connectivity. Yeah, that high availability is something that normally with a VPN service you don't have in your enterprise. And we can provide that with this design that David was explaining. Correct. So another integration that we do is, is an SD-WAN integration. So as you can see, the, the drawing looks similar to the IPsec integration. There's a couple of differences here. So we still have the user connect to our firewalls, but the connectivity from our our Meriplex network to the customer network is over our Meriplex VeloCloud gateways. 
And what we do here is we build an overlay tunnel through VCMP to the customer's uh, Velo Cloud edges at their at their offices or at their offices here. Um, one a couple of benefits to that is we have you know full um, uh, full uh, mesh connectivity from our network to the customer network. So if they had five sites here, we would go directly from our VCG to each site as opposed to going from you know to the data center and then jump off to another location here. We get full uh, dynamic multipath optimization. And if you guys have seen some of our SD-WAN videos before, you'll, you'll have a better understanding of what that is. But basically what we are able to do there is we're able to prioritize uh, traffic and prioritize applications from the corporate network to the VPN server. So this link here, we'll have full QoS over this link, which gives us full visibility. Um, and so it's a lot more control that we have. So, you know, it's a little upgrade than the, than the normal IPsec tunnel because we have a lot more control from our network to the customer network and we can prioritize the applications and have full visibility. Another point too is that we can also leverage, you know, so, you know, with the SD-WAN, you know, the edges over here will send traffic directly to the internet, um, you know, through a VeloCloud gateway if it's going through a SaaS application. So that's another piece as well. And the other integration that we do is, is an MPLS integration. And this is typically what we use for, for customers that already have MPLS services with Meriplex. The benefit to that is that we're already, our MPLS network is already tied into our, where we host our, our uh, firewalls. So we can easily, quickly integrate the, to the customer's MPLS cloud. We still have redundancy if the customer has multiple locations. So we still have redundancy. Um, we still have a full mesh, so the customers have, will have a full mesh because customers will have multiple locations that tie into our MPLS cloud. Um, a lot of the features are the same, except that it's on a dedicated MPLS um, connection from the corporate network to our, to our cloud where our firewalls are at. And again, split tunneling is optional. We can do a split tunneling scenario. Now, all of these solutions, to, to, you know, you know, for the VPN and service, all the integrations will integrate perfectly with the cloud internet security, which uh, Andy's going to talk about now. Thank you, David. So let's talk about again one more time. We were talking about the challenge of you know of your security. Now you're sharing you know it's the same network. Remember the conversation about the perimeter. Now moving from that you know firewall that is controlling and protecting your traffic to now that device that is in the pretty much in a home kind of network. So the benefits of having something like the cloud internet security is, of course, the malware detection and prevention for anything that is in transit. You have sandbox cap capabilities for if someone is trying to download the malware or a recognized hash that has been identified something that is malicious, this will prevent that. You have an IDS IPS engine running, you have content filtering and policy enforcement. This is very important for a lot of organizations that they want to control pretty much where those people are, you know, are accessing, you know, this can be malicious, so they can, this can be productivity type of, of controls from a policy deployment. You can tag your traffic by user. Now, it doesn't matter now if that user is, you know, is in a remote location. Some, some of the normal implementation of this, you require that user to authenticate against your domain controller to see that traffic being tagged. In this case, it doesn't matter. You have an agent, that agent tags your username with the traffic, and you can deploy policies related to that user, to whatever that user can do or cannot do to better protect, again, that traffic. You can integrate all this with your Active Directory, with your SIM to see notifications related to security, so you can pretty much react quickly in case that something is going on. And these have outstanding reporting and dashboards that you can see from a security bandwidth utilization and, and also, if, if you require, we can give you a data exfiltration containment with particular rules that you can write and pretty much make themselves uh, available for you as your organization. Thanks, Andy. And Andy, th this is what we're seeing most of our customers that are going with the VPN service. We're seeing a lot of them package it with iBoss. And yep. the reason is, is because you solve two problems. You solve the connectivity to the network and then you solve a lot of the security problems as well. So, yes. As you can see here, so the, the design looks very similar for the VPN of service and nothing changes there. The difference is that we have a split tunnel from the, the user. So that traffic's gonna go to the internet. It's gonna go to the iBloss cloud 
and then go out to the internet. So when it goes to the iBoss cloud is when it's doing, it's all it's uh, content filtering, it's getting scrubbed. Um, you know, it's doing all the uh, next generation firewall features, if you will, um, before it goes out to the internet and, and goes out to the, to the cloud. So, so this way we're able to protect, you know, both corporate internet traffic. We can enhance security posture for remote users. Um, as Andy said, we can have, you know, real time traffic monitoring and then we apply web uh, categorization and policies to remote users. So this is really the, the, the option that we're seeing a lot of customers go to because it solves two problems and it's, it's, um, it's a, at, a, at a really good price. So. Yeah, and the other thing that is important of what David is talking about here is we are again, one more time, uh, kind of device agnostic also for the iOS agent. This will run in your Mac, will run in your, in your iOS, Apple type of devices, in your Windows, in your Android. So again, we, we, we go back to the conversation of now the organization has to authorize people to use their own devices. We, it doesn't matter. We can deploy both agents. We can deploy the VPN and we can deploy the iBoss to solve both problems that David is, is pretty much talking here. Perfect. So the last option we're looking at is the SD-WAN at home. It's an SD-WAN option for the, the uh, home user. And the benefits here, so you're gonna be able to prioritize your applications to the WAN. You're gonna be able to, we can, we can potentially integrate this with cloud security. So integrate this with iBoss. We're seeing a lot of customers go that route. Um, you're gonna get voice quality over the internet. We can have, you know, whether you have single circuits or redundant circuits, um, you, there's still benefit in both scenarios. So a lot of the customer, a lot of customers or people ask me, you know, hey, well, if I have, I have a single, uh, you know, circuit at my house, does SD WAN make sense? And I said, yes. If we're talking about VeloCloud SD WAN, it makes a lot of sense. And the reason for that is the forward error correction. So, so what we can do, is, let's say we have a single link, and let's say we have some packet loss. On that link, we can actually replicate traffic. So for voice traffic, if if we drop packets from point A to point B the VeloCloud can actually replicate traffic and fill in the gaps to make that a, a seamless uh, call as far as, um, you know, over, over a circuit that has packet loss. So even at, even at people that have a single circuit at their house, you know, there's still a lot of value in, in um, the VeloCloud SD-WAN solution. We can put uh, LTE backup on it. So for customers that have, you know, maybe they only have a single wired circuit but they're they're very critical to the business. We can do an LTE backup circuit that only comes on, you know, if the primary circuit is down or degraded. One of the <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things as well too is that we can separate home traffic and business traffic with wired and wireless. So we have segmentation um, built into these these uh, Velo Cloud edges. So we can separate out, for example, if you know you want to have your home user for your kids, your Netflix we can separate that traffic out. So for a couple of reasons, for security, as well as performance. Um, we can separate that out with your corporate traffic. So besides being able to prioritize voice traffic on, on the corporate side and, and some of your other applications, we can also, um, <clears throat> we can also uh, limit or deprioritize traffic from home users um, to make sure that while you're on a phone call or while you're doing something you know, important for work, your kids aren't hogging up all the bandwidth for Netflix and Disney plus, I guess is big now. I think we're paying for that now. So um, <laughs> I'm sure Andy, I think you guys probably have that too. Yes, we do. And, and you know, the funny thing that you, you were talking about this and I was thinking that if you have an LTE backup, you can probably start sending some of that traffic using that kind of uh, connectivity instead of your wire, right? So with your business policies, you can you can do that, right, David? Right. Yeah, you can certainly do that. So we can send certain traffic over the LTE backup, depending on the package. Typically, the LTE is is more expensive to send traffic on, but we do see a lot of that with customers that'll have a uh, a point to point wireless circuit and maybe a DSL backup, right? So we'll send certain traffic over certain ways at the house, um, so that way the you know the uh, the the, the parents that's uh, working and bringing in the money is able to get their traffic prioritized so they can, they can uh, do business. So yeah. my, um, my daughter will not be good, uh, very happy with your idea, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we're seeing this again for, for power users, you know, a lot of, you know, executives um, we're, but we're also seeing it for receptionists. So we're seeing a lot of receptionists working from home right now that need to take those calls. And we're also seeing it for a lot of uh, contact center users. So. 
Yeah, and remember that the, that the whole concept of having the reception is working from home is that you want to give that perception that you know that nothing changed and you're still providing the same level of service back to your customers. And that's why we're seeing this transition on, on, on the reception side, that they, they pick up the phone, they have a great quality of voice, and, and they see one at home is, is a great option for that. Correct. So we'll just quickly go into the, the design here. So basically at the customer, or sorry, at the, at the end user's house um, or wherever they're located at, they'll have a physical edge box. They could have a virtual edge, but usually we're seeing them in physical edges. Um, we're seeing usually 510s, uh, edge 510s out there. And what we're seeing here is they'll have either a physical phone or maybe they'll have a soft phone on site. They build a, automatically we build a VCMP tunnel to the gateways. We also build VCMP tunnels directly. It's not on this drawing, but directly to the, um, the corporate edges as well. So over these v VCMP tunnels, which is a basically a um, secured overlay tunnel, we're able to prioritize our traffic um, to where it needs to go. So we prioritize our traffic, do our forward air correction to, for, for voice traffic, prioritize traffic to the cloud for SaaS applications, for critical applications. And then again, we also build tunnels directly to the edge to get um, to get to you know corporate applications. So in this scenario, you if the cust if the, the end user has an edge at home, they would not need a, the VPN as a service while they're at home. We can we can fully integrate this with iBoss, so they can have the same security that they would. But this re this edge replaces the VPN service while they're at home. When they take their laptop and go somewhere else, right now there's unfortunately not a lot of places for them to go, but when that opens up again, um, when Starbucks opens up again, and they take their laptop, they will need the VPN as a service. No, that's fantastic, guys. Um, so so thank you very much for taking us through this, uh, the uh, Mariplex work at home solutions. Uh, we know that a lot of our existing customers and, and some of our new customers can certainly take advantage of these uh, solutions. So thank you for taking us through it. Um, just a quick question around, um, you know, how quickly can we deploy these three solutions, right? So we've talked about VPN as services, uh, VPN as a service. We've talked about um, cloud internet and we've talked about SD-WAN at home. Can we deploy these solutions quickly as, as companies are sending workers home every day? Yes. I'll let you take it, Andy. Yes, yes, for sure. So one of the major things that everyone is, is asking us is to get this running. So yes, we we can get the VPN as a service at cloud pretty much up and running very, very fast. In the case of the SD1, if we have to ship a box uh, to their location, David, we still feel. Yeah, we're still very, very quickly. We have we have the boxes in stock, so we're you know we're definitely ready ready for it. So it's a matter of shipping it. We do all the configuration um, remotely, so there's no on-site piece for it. We obviously you know we're not going to come into your house and and send a tech in there. We could, but you know now's not the time for that. Um, so everything's done remotely. It's a zero-touch deployment. So once we configure it from you know from our orchestrator, we ship the box out and the end user plugs it in. It's a very simple simple plug in. It can integrate. It can either replace the customer's existing cable modem or, or uh, sorry, uh, firewall that they have on site, or it can um, work with it, so sit behind it. Yeah, well, one, one important thing also, Robert, for what you're saying is remember that if you have your VPN running for whatever reason and you say, I don't have enough license, so I need to grow a scale, whatever they have, this is not going to disrupt that, right? So you can say, hey, I'm going to move to VPN as a service. I'm going to start delivering that service to my customers without touching whatever is working right now for you, right? Because you don't want to break whatever is providing a service right now. And then you can slowly transition your team or whenever you can to the new service. So this is not, this is not preventing to use whatever you have in place right now. It's adding value. It's adding a, a, a better solution for you at the very end, but it's not going to break your existing VPN service if you already have one working. No, that's fantastic. And and, and thanks again, guys. I mean, I think with, with that, uh, you know, we mirror Perplex um, with our with our work at home uh, solutions, um, we wanted to we wanted to respond quickly um, to this uh, this 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 COVID nineteen situation that's happening and and disrupting the workplace, right? And so with that, we've developed three offerings that I'll take you through here. Um, and and uh, uh, around the offerings, we're offering um, sixty day trials for each one of these. And the reason we're doing that that is because. We want to support our customers the best way we can, um, especially those who are sending employees home to work. 
and, uh, and especially those who don't have solutions in place to support those remote workers. So the, the solution that uh, David and Andy took us through gives uh, our customers a connectivity to the home um, with the security um, controls uh, to help them uh, uh, you know, secure that traffic and allows those employees to be able to get onto the corporate network, um, get out access cloud services and SaaS services, um, just like they were if they're at the office, right? So these these are all in, uh, important solutions to to help our customers get back to productivity as quickly as possible. So the, the first option is the VPN as a service that the guys talked about. So this is our, our connectivity uh, from the home that gets you access to the corporate network. We talked about the split tunneling, capabilities that allows the customer or the, the user rather to still access you know, a, a services directly to the internet. Um, and you know, this is, this solution does integrate with active directory. The, the second option um, is the VPN as a service bundled with the cloud internet uh, security that the guys talked about, right? So your connectivity with VPN as a service and then the cloud internet security is giving you the security controls, right? Your web content filtering, your SSL decryption uh, and, and the other services around malware um, and IDS IPS. So this is, these are the, the security controls bundled with the VPN as a service um, that we believe is gonna be our, our, our fastest uh, uh, a, a selling solution because it gives you the connectivity with the cloud control, with the right. cloud and internet security. And one question on this, Robert, so, and this is for Andy, if, if a customer already has a VPN solution, so let's say they're, they're, they already have the license they need on their, their corporate firewall, but they don't have a cloud security solution, can we, can we also offer the 60-day free trial just for the, the, the IBOS cloud se internet security yes. and then yes. package it in uh, with their existing VPN? Yes, we can. Definitely, you know, we are here, guys, to help you during these hard circumstances, and we are flexible in these packages to offer whatever is better for you, and we are here to provide the connectivity, help you with the, with the performance, and helping you with the security, so definitely we can do that. Perfect. Fantastic. Uh, and then the, the third option is the, uh, the VMware SD-WAN solution that David took us through, as well as the, the cloud uh, internet security that Andy talked about. These are bundled together for your your power users, maybe even an executive or receptionist or call center agent who might be taking a lot of calls who are gonna need a, a voice quality control or, or or quality control for real-time video traffic as well, right? So these, the, the SUN gives you the secure connectivity and then the cloud internet security is your security controls on top of that, right? So this, we believe this solution will be will be best positioned you know, for, for companies who, who who have those types of power users or those types of user profiles that, that might fit well with this. Um, and in addition to these three options, um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we put out a lot of videos and, and Meriplex um, is a, is a full solutions uh, company. So we, we offer the full IT stack. So outside of those three options, if there's anything else we can help our customers with, we're, we're doing that. We're mobilizing our resources as quickly as possible, helping customers with, uh, with installations um, and, and the, the whole gamut of things that we can do to, to help support our customers. Um, we're opening up the toolbox and all of our resources to help us do that and to help our customers transition during this tough time. Um, as we've talked about before and, and we're hearing in all, uh, you know, from, you know, from our officials, uh, local and federal that, you know, we'll get through this together and uh, we're here to support our customers. And, and if, if you have any questions about any of the solutions in this video um, or, or any questions around other solutions that we can help you guys with, please feel free to, you can contact our main number at 281-404-2300, uh, or you can reach out to me uh, directly. Uh, again, my name is Rob Ford, and you can reach me at robford at meriplex.com. And again, we're happy to answer any questions. We'll pull in David, we'll pull in Andy, and any of our other subject matter experts to help you as quickly as possible. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, everybody be safe. Be safe, have a Thanks, good day. Guys.